talk about you and shame you. And I wasn't going to let that happen in your home. So I made the decision that I'm going to fight for her. And I'm going to make sure that she has everything that she needs. You know, my youngest child, who I did not expect to have a uh, baby, was pregnant. you can't get a job so I was trying to use YouTube to become a source of income so that I can provide for my son I just wanted to be able to connect with other teen moms around the world so that other teen moms can see that they're not alone I get hate next comments people hate on my baby how do you hate on a baby take two steps to see okay there's nothing really I can do about it but know who I am and not get discouraged by it I don't encourage others to get pregnant young, but I personally don't regret getting pregnant young. Sincere changed a lot of things for me, and if it weren't for getting pregnant young, I don't think my life would have been like that. The future holds a lot for us. We won't be missing out on anything. Yeah. 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 Get anything effortlessly. And then she just kind of drops the bomb and she's like, eh, it is a terminal disease. And I don't remember anything she said after that because my heart just dropped <laughs> into my stomach. 16 year old Logan Paxel is living with San Filippo syndrome. San Filippo syndrome progresses over time from a child that looks very energetic, happy, healthy to a child that begins to lose their ability to walk, to learn, to swallow and eat by mouth. They develop seizures and movement disorders and eventually are bedridden and, and pass away typically in their early teens. What is this? Yeah, good. San Filippo syndrome is caused by a single gene defect. And it's almost unbelievable to think that one letter misspelled in your entire genetic code can lead to such a devastating disorder. Logan and his twin Austin were born in 2007. <laughs> they were both healthy. There were no indications that anything was going on at all with Logan. He met his milestones up to about a year and we noticed he started falling behind his twin. The biggest thing was the speech delay. And that was like the red flag to start it all. He had no words at all while his brother was just talking. He ended up having respiratory infections, chronic respiratory infections and chronic ear infections. And he was also having some GI issues and he had this just big round belly and we just couldn't figure out what was going on. Finally, the pediatrician was like, this seems like a full body thing. Let's get you into a geneticist and get some genetic testing done and see if there's anything going on. In 2010, the Washington State family learned what Logan's condition was. I'll never forget it. It was a Friday evening. Um, I got a phone call from the genetic counselor. I'd never heard of it in my life. And she was kind of going over it a little bit. And I kept thinking to myself, okay, so how do we treat it? How do we get him better? And then she just kind of drops the bomb and she's like, eh, it is a terminal disease. Life expectancy is the late teens. And unfortunately at this time, there's no treatment or cure. And I don't remember anything she said after that because my heart just dropped <laughs> into my stomach. That was just absolutely devastating. It's really weird because they just tell you, just take them home and love them. That's all you can do. 
and it's really strange to kind of mourn somebody who's still there with you and not just really them but the life that you have planned like you had this whole life planned for your family you have this kind of an idea of the life you want for your child and in a second it's just completely ripped away the family didn't have many resources after the diagnosis so we still didn't know a whole lot about it until we went to our next genetics appointment in per inpatient or in person and uh, even then we got a packet and that still wasn't super helpful through that first week it was just awful I cried myself to sleep every night I didn't know like I, I, I didn't know what to expect um, I just never imagined our life going that way but my husband and I both, we were just really sad at first. And then after the first week, something just kind of just snapped. I was like, no way. I'm not accepting this. Absolutely not. There has to be something. Even if it's not a cure, there has to be something to keep him here with us longer to make his life better. The family decided Logan would have an experimental stem cell treatment when he was three. The purpose is... Uh, to give him just a better quality of life. They're introducing new stem cells that make the enzyme that his body is missing. And if it takes, it's possible that his body can start making enzymes to give him a better quality of life. Help with like the physical symptoms of San Felipe syndrome. It was a three month long thing. Cause it's, it's basically a bone marrow transplant. He had to do chemo to kill off his immune system. So it would accept the new stem cells. It's very risky, very, very risky. That was probably one of the hardest decisions we've ever had to make as parents because we were putting his life at risk by putting him through that. In my opinion, I do think it has helped. As he got older, Logan regressed even more. When he started losing his speech, it was a very, very difficult time. There was lots of screaming. There was lots of meltdowns because I imagine he was extremely frustrated and scared. Around like the age 12, he just mellowed out and something just switched and he just became this really happy kid. Life with Logan is different than with most 16-year-olds. Daily life is pretty much just working with Logan on keeping skills that he already has. Because uh, if he doesn't practice these skills, he will lose them. Walking up and down stairs, fine motor skills, engagement, communication, attention span, things like that. Just little basic things that we all take for granted. He has to practice every single day to keep. Logan communicates with something called a pex binder. It's this binder and it has pictures of all the desired items that he would ever want. And he can pull it off and hand it to me. Which show do you want? Can you tell me? You want Peppa Pig, okay. A lot of the time it's body language that he's communicating with, but also it's me anticipating his needs a lot too. I can usually anticipate his needs before he even needs to ask for anything. His cognitive level is at a nine to 12 month level, he gets assessments done twice a year, and that's when they kind of figure out where he is cognitively. But he, he's still, he is still so much a teenage boy. And we still see a lot of teenage behavior. And as he's gotten older, he's really mature too. Even with challenges, Logan is an active and happy teen. He runs everywhere. He loves the outdoors. He loves to go hiking and go on a walk almost every single day. He absolutely loves swimming. And it's really cool because he goes to the pool almost every day and that's a form of physical therapy for him. He loves his books. He has board books and he can't read them, but he loves flipping through the pages and just looking at pictures. And that will keep him entertained for like an hour just looking at his books. But his absolute favorite things is trampolines. We cannot go anywhere without a trampoline. So we have like three trampolines. We have a travel trampoline that folds so that we can take it with us when we travel because he just needs to have his jumping time. Logan 
has a unique sleeping arrangement. Logan has something called a sleep safe bed, and pretty much it completely encloses. I lock it from the outside at night, and there's two big reasons for that. So the first one is he is an eloper, and eloping is basically just somebody who will wander off and just walk down the street, and Logan has no concept of safety, so he would just walk right in front of a car, but also he can wander around the house at night too, which can also be dangerous if I'm sleeping or if Billy is sleeping. But the second reason is because he has seizures. And what's great about this bed is it has padding all around it. And because it's enclosed, there's no risk of him falling out and hurting himself. So when he goes into a seizure, he's protected until I can get to him and help him. He also has focal seizures. You'll see it in his face. He has the partial seizures where the top of his body will kind of stiffen up a little bit. It won't last long. During those seizures, he is aware of what's going on, which is unfortunate because I don't imagine that's scary. Um, but during the tonic tonic seizures, completely unaware of what's happening. He also has a movement disorder called dystonia. A lot of times that will follow right after a tonic tonic seizure. And that's just the worst because his whole body tenses up. I describe it as like a full body Charlie horse because all of his muscles are tensing and it is painful. It, it, it's just awful. San Filippo syndrome is often referred to as childhood Alzheimer's. stresses the differences. It's not just a neurological disease. It is also whole body disease. So it affects them physically as well. And I think sometimes people get hung up on the Alzheimer's part or the dementia part. Some people call childhood dementia and they think it's just neurological, but it's also physical as well. Logan has many different secondary diagnoses due to him having San Filippo syndrome, epilepsy, generalized dystonia, autism, sleep disturbances, muscle weakness, nonverbal, rumination, chronic sinusitis, pica, intellectual disability, overpronation, light scoliosis, and a lot more. Children with San Filippo syndrome share a similar appearance. One thing you'll hear San Filippo parents say is that our children are San Filippo siblings, and that's because they all look alike, and that's because they all share these characteristics. One of the main things you're going to see right away are the thick, bushy eyebrows these kids have. They also have a low nasal bridge, and you'll notice they have these long, black eyelashes. And as they get older, they have these really full, beautiful lips, and you'll notice that they have very coarse, thick hair. Some kids have larger heads. And another thing you'll notice when they're younger is they have this big round belly 
Noelle works hard to keep life normal for Logan's siblings, Austin and Aiden. Billy and I have done everything we can to make sure that Logan's siblings have just a simple upbringing and that their life doesn't revolve around San Felipe syndrome because it's, it's not fair to them. I will say, if anything, having a disabled brother has made them more compassionate, more empathetic, extremely patient and understanding. <laughs> Logan has a special bond with his dad, who served in the Navy. Billy has always been Logan's person. They're so close, and Billy's like, he's so much fun. But Billy's also just always there. Like, he's always there helping. They, they just have the cutest relationship. And Logan looks at him with so much love. And sometimes I'm like, what the heck? Noelle is fortunate to have great people around her helping with Logan. I actually, I have a great support system. I have a great group of friends. But also what's really cool is the Navy provides us with respite care. So I have an amazing respite provider who's also like one of my best friends, which is so cool. I am able to get self-care. I am able to go and volunteer out in town if I want to. I'm able to run my nonprofit. It's so great. Like I have a lot of support. Hey guys, today is World San Felipe Day. Noelle began sharing the family's journey on TikTok in 2020. Her video spread awareness. People were so invested. I mean, Logan's amazing. You can't not be drawn to him. And what's wonderful about it is so many people all over the world now know what San Felipe Syndrome is. There are parents out there now seeing these kids and being able to compare them with their kids and go to their pediatrician and be like, I think, I think this is happening to my child. And they're getting early diagnosis. And early diagnosis is so rare for these kids. And, but it's so, like, it, you need to get an early diagnosis if you want to get them into clinical trials. So it, it's been really great. Noelle is unsure of what Logan's future will look like. Every child is different, so it's really hard to say, you know, how they'll decline. Often what you're going to see is, uh, at end of life, is uh, pneumonia and respiratory illness and they're just not strong enough to fight it off. So that's kind of the uh, what families can expect. But what you're gonna see is there's three stages of the disease. And the third stage is when these kids really start slowing down and their organs start to deteriorate. And that includes the lungs. They are immunocompromised. So catching a respiratory virus can be very dangerous for these kids in that stage of the disease. Get anything better it's hard to say like where he is in the disease, but he's really healthy right now. Like we just live in the moment. And if something comes up, we're like, we can make that work. We'll do it. Today was one of those days I had to come to terms with what San Felipe Syndrome is doing and will continue to do to Logan. Some days are worse than others, and today it was particularly noticeable on our walk with his feet dragging on the gravel path. That is the nature of this disease. We can try to hold on to skills and muscle strength for as long as possible, but eventually San Felipe wins. Not all of Logan's future will be shared online. I will continue to share it, not necessarily Video, because I would not want someone videoing me and sharing that to the world uh, in my most vulnerable moment. That's why most of the videos you see of Logan are pretty happy. But I will continue to talk.